Welcome back to HD Technologic. In our last video, we set off to fix the Power One Aurora inverter. The inverter was thrown an EO31 error, and we found out that a number of connections to the relays had burnt out. If you haven't seen part one yet, go and check it out now. So, after doing a detailed repair on firing up the inverter, it seemed to be completely dead. Had we wasted our time? Let's find out. So we're back. So after a wonderful start, we found out something with this unit. Well, we found out that the Aurora, and maybe all string inverters, I'm not sure, actually requires DC voltage coming on the input from the solar panels to actually do anything um, without there being some sort of DC on this input. This unit appeared absolutely dead. And that did take me by surprise. I've done some research, um, Google's amazing, and found out that we do need a solar panel connected. Now, unfortunately, in our workshop, uh, we're not in the place where this came from, and we don't actually have any photovoltaic panels. So doing some reading, on the side of this unit, it says that the DC input is anything from 90 to like, 580 volts. So we know that we need to give it some DC in order for it to, to do something. And what I suggested uh, to HD that we did was we build up effectively a fake solar panel. Um, this is getting into the realms, guys, of being on the dangerous side. So I absolutely do not suggest for one second any of you attempt anything like what we've done. But let me just talk you through the setup. So this is of course the inverter that we tried a few minutes ago and had nothing from it because there was no DC coming in. Um, what we're going to do firstly is explain some of the components here. This is an isolation transformer. Basically the mains voltage that comes in from the socket will go into the isolation transformer and out of it will come the same uh, voltage but it will be isolated from the supply and that means if we do touch on it by mistake we're less likely to get a belt from it but it doesn't absolutely guarantee we won't because if we touch two things then it's just as dangerous. The isolation transformer feeds into this device called the Variac and the Variac allows us to control the voltage coming out anything from zero volts all the way up to full mains and actually a little bit above. Coming out of the Variac, we now need to turn this AC voltage into DC. And this is what this circuit board is doing here. This circuit board, believe it or not, is actually part of uh, a DVD player. And it's part of the switch mode power supply that we've just cut this out. So basically, AC comes in, it gets rectified to DC, it gets smoothed by this small capacitor. And the DC output, which of course is variable because we're controlling the input from here then goes through an old-fashioned 60-watt lamp. Now, I'll explain the 60-watt lamp. You don't actually need this, but this is another safety feature. I don't actually know how much current this device is going to try to pull when it goes online. If it pulls anything more than a couple of watts, it's going to blow the rectifier and the circuitry on this board right out of the water. So we need to limit the current. So putting it through a light lamp will help limit the current. So, with that in mind, what we're going to do now is power up the AC input to the inverter. We're going to give it grid, okay? So I'm going to turn that on now. And of course we don't see anything. The next thing we will do is power up our DC input, making sure that's down at zero. Plugging it in. And now what you'll see already, we've got about a volt building up. I'll start to increase the voltage going into the device. Remember it said that we needed at least, what was it, 90 volts to do anything. We're at 50 now. Are we going to see anything working? Okay, we're getting close to that magical 90. I'd expect to see something soon. 
Are we no? Are we going to see something soon? Ah. Okay. So that's excellent. So we'll pump in about 120 volts, being very careful to keep well away from all this conversion equipment and anything which has got exposed connections. I've tried to isolate as much as we can, but that circuit board is definitely live. Now, what's it saying here? Waiting sun. So that means we haven't actually got enough DC voltage coming on the string yet for this thing to be happy that it can actually start generating. So let's crank this a little bit more. Up we go with the voltage. Okay, at what point do you think this will be happy to start generating? I'm not sure, I don't know what the thresholds are. We're now up to, oh, we've gone over range, so let's give this to the next range. So we're now over 200 volts DC going in. I would expect soon this guy to want to start to do something. Ah, ah, here we go, right. So this is looking quite promising. This is the same information screens that we were seeing when the unit was connected in the loft. The only problem at that point was that when it was trying to connect to the grid, it was saying error zero E031. Now we've got a next connection in 40 seconds. So it's saying we've got a grid coming in at 232 volts, which is okay. The frequency is 50 hertz, yep, yeah, okay, 49.9. Measuring the um, uh, resistance, I guess that's insulation, that was fantastic, 20 mega ohms. And now we're down to 20 seconds before it tries to connect. Now, obviously we don't want this to draw too much power because we will blow our AC to DC converter up because this is only a, a small converter. So 220 volts going in, I am going to be on the Variac to turn this down if it takes too much. Right, here we go. Okay, that's looking excellent. So the lamp is lit up because it's actually taking power from the DC. And it's now given us readings here that's showing us what are, and we've got an 8 watt power generation. So we're actually feeding back to the grid 8 watts. The fact that we're taking the 8 watts in is, is irrelevant. That's absolutely brilliant. Hey everyone, it seems that our repairs to the circuit board and new relays have actually worked. All it needed was some DC input and it fired up like normal. In your position, just remember that the DC input is the solar panel output. It's working. Should we see how low we can take the string before it cuts off? So look, it's really interesting. As I'm taking the voltage down, so this is modulated and taking more power. So actually at one point, you need to be careful we don't blow that AC to DC uh, board, but look, I can take it all the way down. I'm down at 140, 130. There we go. Look, see, yeah, it's 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 fluctuating. Let's take it right down. Come on. I reckon in a minute it will say that we've run out of daytime. Down to see, it's it's the area is power out zero watt. So it's now, yeah, it's now it's now realised that it's too low. Peak daytime, 9 watts. Fixed. Well done, HD. You too, Dad. So, the repair of the Power One Aurora inverter appears to have been a success. If your inverter has shown the EO31 error, then chances are that your circuit board and relays have suffered like ours, shown in Part 1. We hope that you have found the information in our video helpful and invite you to like, comment and subscribe to the HD Technologic YouTube channel for more fun technology related videos. And as a final reminder, 
If you do not have experience or confidence in high power electronic engineering, you should not attempt any such repairs yourself. Thank you.